Modern tanks are armed with smoothbore and rifled guns, but vast majority use smoothbore guns. The main gun caliber is mostly 120 and 125 mm, but depending what you consider modern, you may find other gun calibers such as 100, 105 or 115 mm. And they can fire various projectiles. In this video we will cover basic projectiles and some of the basic things regarding how they work. This video is sponsored by War Thunder. War Thunder is a military vehicle combat online game. It is free to play on PC, PlayStation 4 and Xbox One. Not to mention that it is cross-platform between PC and consoles. The game features an incredible arsenal of more than 1500 historically accurate playable tanks, aircraft, helicopters and ships from 1930s to 1990s. Best thing about the game are its realistic physics and one of the most detailed and immersive vehicle damage models in gaming. If you use my link to register, you will receive a bonus, a premium vehicle, tank, aircraft or ship, as well as a 3-day account boost. The game is completely free, so nothing is stopping you, you can start playing immediately. Now back to our video. The main projectile the tanks use to deal with other tanks is Armor Piercing Fin Stabilized Discarding Sabo, or APFSDS for short. These projectiles, as the name suggests, are used for armor penetration. Unlike the standard bullets or the older tank shells that use rifling, which spins the projectile for stabilization, these projectiles use fins, just like an arrow fired from a bow or the crossbow bolts. As I mentioned, some tanks do have rifled guns, but they still fire fin stabilized projectiles. The way this is done is with a special ring around the sabo that spins instead of the entire projectile, thus accelerating the projectile without actually spinning it. Unlike standard projectiles, these always have a diameter that is more narrow than the diameter of a main gun, and thus they require a discarding sabo that is the same diameter as the main gun, which carries the projectile as it travels through the barrel of the gun. But as soon as the projectile leaves the barrel, the sabo starts falling off, or discarding, letting the projectile travel on its own. These projectiles have cores that are usually made from very dense metals, such as tungsten and depleted uranium. You can come along the term monoblock projectile, that means that the core fills the entire length of the penetrator, and this is how all modern Sabo projectiles are made. In the past, the sheet would cover the entire length of the penetrator, but the core would only fill a certain length, which would usually be very short. But today, the sheet only covers the core all around it and is far thinner than it used to be. Now, the penetration of the projectile depends on the length and the diameter. The smaller the diameter is, the more energy is exerted on a smaller point, resulting in better penetration. The longer the projectile is, more of the energy is exerted on that point. So the longer they are, and the smaller the diameter they have, the better. So a projectile like this will greatly outperform a projectile like this. Of course, there would be a limit to how thin they can get. I don't want you to draw a conclusion that a 1mm thick projectile would be the best option. When it comes to actual penetration, when penetrating steel plates the performance increases on sloped targets. That is because since the projectiles are far far thinner than older armor piercing shells, during penetration the resistance of the steel plate starts pushing the penetrator, which forces it to start turning and thus increasing the effectiveness on the sloped targets. But against modern composite armors that may not have any significant effect, since it is going through multiple layers of different materials which are usually spaced away from each other, but it all depends on the projectile and the armor it is impacting. Next type of projectile is high explosive anti-tank, HEAT for short, and those projectiles are also known as hollow charges or shaped charges. Just like the Sable projectiles, these are fin stabilized and are referred to as heat FS. This kind of projectile works in the way that it has a hollow part in the upper part of its construction, which is used to focus the explosion on that part. What happens then is that the explosion sends a jet at a very high velocity through a small area into the target, which can have massive penetration effect. Unlike the previously mentioned Sabo, 
the penetration of heat projectiles does not depend on the distance, this is the projectile uses its own explosion to send the penetrator into the target, rather than kinetic energy. In the early Cold War period, shape charges were the greatest threat to the enemy tanks since they had much better penetration than kinetic energy projectiles. And no matter how thick the steel of the tanks kept increasing, shaped charges always seemed to follow along. But today, with modern composites, it seems that shaped charges are starting to become more and more useless, especially if the tank with composite armor has some form of explosive reactive armor on top. Modern shaped charges are mostly tandem shaped. This means that the standard charge has a small charge in front of it, which increases the penetration and helps deal with explosive reactive armor by either detonating it before the main charge strikes or creating a hole in the explosive reactive armor that would prevent it from detonating. But modern explosive reactive armors have been developed to counter even the tandem shaped charges. Because of that, tanks are usually armed with these projectiles to deal with less armored vehicles such as armored personnel carriers or to deal with enemy structures and sometimes even infantry. One category of heat projectiles are anti-tank guided missiles, or ATGM for short. They also work in the same way once striking a target, but they are propelled in a different way. Many tanks today have ability to fire ATGMs, and what they actually are are missiles that use some form of guidance, usually laser, to follow and strike the target. They usually have greater range than standard heat FS and AP FSES munitions, but are much slower. Again, they aren't as good as APF SDS for penetrating tanks, so they are mainly used for other vehicles. But if the need arises, they can still be used effectively against tanks, especially if not impacting the front armor. The projectile tanks use to deal with infantry is high explosive or high explosive fragmentation projectile. These projectiles are pretty much straightforward. They hit the target, they explode and produce shrapnel which are usually balls made out of tungsten or some other metal. Most modern ones are a little bit different. On top of detonating on impact, they have other options as well, such as detonating mid-air and thus covering a larger area with shrapnel, which also has far better effect on targets behind cover. On top of that, they have a fuse delay detonation, which is used to shoot at targets behind cover and vehicles with thin armor. There are also high explosive squash head or hash projectiles, used mainly by tanks with rifled guns. Those projectiles are basically plastic explosive with a slight fuse delay. Once the projectile impacts a target, the plastic explosive spreads onto it and then it explodes. This can create spalling on standard armor plates, but today, with composite armors, this can only be useful against enemy infantry fighting vehicles, armored personal carriers, structures or just as a basic high explosive projectile. Don't forget to check out War Thunder, where you can take control of many land, air or naval vehicles. Use the link from the description to get a premium vehicle and a 3-day account boost when you register. Remember, the game is completely free for PC, PlayStation 4 and Xbox One. Just download and play. I hope this video was helpful to you and that you learned something new. If you like my content, you might consider supporting me on Patreon. It would really mean a lot. Or just leave a like on the video or subscribe to the channel. I hope you enjoyed and I will see you all in the next video. Have a nice day.